pretty sure it's right. last year when okay good evening welcome thank you for joining us this is the marion city council meeting for thursday february 9th Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Ms. Atkins? Here. Mr. Jensen? Here. Mr. Harper? Here. Mayor Abuasli? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Ms. Menser? Here. Mr. Cernet? <laughs> okay first on the agenda this evening we have two proclamations i'll present the first one and council member jensen will present the second one we have uh denise bridges here from the civil rights commission please come forward uh for the black history month proclamation Okay. Whereas during Black History Month, we recognize and celebrate the many important achievements and contributions made by African Americans to our nation's econ economic, cultural, and political development. And whereas Black History Month grew out of the establishment of Negro History Week in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And whereas the observance of Black History Month is an opportunity for Marian residents to reflect on the value that all people add to our diverse community and the need to continue our efforts to stand up to racism and work actively to build a truly equitable and just society for all people. And whereas the city of Marion strives to be a welcoming and inclusive community in which all residents are valued and given opportunities to belong, achieve their goals and make positive contributions. And whereas the city of Marion is proud to honor the history and contributions of African Americans in our city and throughout our state and nation. And whereas the 2023 national theme for the observance of Black History Month is Black resistance and encourages exploration of how African Americans have resisted historic and ongoing oppression in all forms. Now, therefore, in recognition of the rich history of African Americans and the contributions of African Americans, past, present, and future, I, Nicholas Abuasili, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim February 23rd as Black History Month in the City of Marion and encourage all residents to celebrate diversity as an asset to Marion. Seek out educational opportunities on the hist history and contributions of African Americans and join our city's efforts to promote progress toward a society that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous for all. Thank you. You're welcome. Here, hold it there. there you go. Would you like to say something? Yeah. I would like to say thank you very much for uh, giving me the honor to accept this proclamation, but also to remember you say Black history, but it should not be just one month because Black history is American history. It's not about just Blacks, it's history, it's part of our history, but we often don't know about our culture or about the Black culture. And so it's very important for people to take time to learn about our culture, as well as for us to learn about other people's culture. And so I'm going to challenge each and every one of you, this month, take one moment to learn something about African-American history. And I'm not talking about the usual African-American that are famous, the Rosa Parks and the Martin Luther King. Look for the future, because there's a lot of people who have made contributions to this society. I thank you. Thank you, Denise. The 
The next proclamation is for Love Your Library Month, and Councilmember Jensen will present that. We have Susan here from the Library Board. You want to come forward? And of course, one of the best places to learn about Black history is at the library. All right, face the camera. Whereas libraries connect people, resources, and culture to build and sustain a diverse, knowledgeable, and vibrant community. And whereas in a world undergoing constant change, libraries provide, provide connections to the past and future of our communities, nations, civilizations, and whereas the expansion of electronic networks links libraries together and makes their resources more easily accessible for library users around the world. And whereas libraries provide equal access to important resources for all people, including resources relating to health, economics, housing, the environment, and countless other areas to support better living conditions and to help people lead longer, more productive and fulfilling lives. And whereas the Berrien Public Library offers story times, teen programming, and summer reading programs to encourage children to build habits of lifelong reading and learning that will benefit their personal and professional lives. And whereas the Marion Public Library offers basic literacy programs, computers, job searching capabilities, and other resources to increase opportunities for community residents and support businesses and economic development. And whereas the Marion Public Library engages Marion residents of all ages with services, spaces, and resources to enrich their lives and the life of our community. And whereas the Marion Public Library creates a welcoming environment for everyone to celebrate the life of literacy, learning, creating, communicating, and cultural exchange. Now, therefore, I, Steve Jensen, on behalf of Nicholas Abuasili, the mayor of the city of Marion, do hereby proclaim February 2023 as Love Your Library Month and encourage all residents to visit our library and thank a librarian for their commitment to the success of this unique and wonderful institution. Thank you. Mike Shores. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Um, as this proclamation states, there is a little bit of everything at the library for everyone. Um, as the past several months have shown, everybody loves the library. We have been very busy and we're a wonderful asset to the community and we love the community as much as they love us. Uh, I see this proclamation as more as a recognition to our staff who truly makes the library what they are day in and day out. Thank you. Hello, I'm Susan Kling, Vice President of the Library Board, and I'd like to say on behalf of the board that we're thrilled with the response that the community has shown to the new library. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the mayor and the city council members for all their support of this project. I'd also like to thank the library staff who are doing a wonderful job welcoming people into the new library and are a large part of the reason that people love our library. One last uh, thought I want to remind you all or tell you all that the Friends of the Marion Library have a book sale this weekend from 9 to 5 on Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sunday in the library meeting room. So we hope you'll come in and find some great books to take home with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, we have a public forum, which is a time set aside for comments on any item which is on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing. Is there anyone here to address the council on any item on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing? Come forward, please state your name and address. Good evening, I'm Sydney Lovell with ITC Midwest. Uh, 123 Fifth Street Southeast in Cedar Rapids. Um, just wanted to say that I did view the council's work session the other night. 
Um, and I did hear Grant's concerns um, about the chain link fence. And while I know that's not necessarily part of what we're doing tonight, I uh, did just wanna offer a brief comment um, concerning those, concerning your comments. Um, the safe and reliable operation of our electric transmission system is obviously our highest priority. ITC has protections in place at our most critical facilities and remains on high alert for any suspicious activity related to our assets. As threats to the grid do grow and become more sophisticated, ITC remains committed to strengthening our transmission system to combat both natural and man-made threats. So we do have a, a redundant networked transmission system and I offer any of you, if you have more questions on that um, and our protection at our, our sub, uh, substations, reach out to me, I'm happy to visit with any of you. That's all I got. Thank you. Anyone else to address council on any, any item that is on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing, please come forward. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as follows. Items A1 through F1, resolutions 31143 through 31171. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented, including items A1 through F1, resolutions 31143 through 31171. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. For the next section of the agenda, I will turn over the meeting to the Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Your Honor. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abuasli's abstention as follows. Items A1 through E1, resolutions 31113 to 31117, and 31172 through 31177. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abwasili's abstention as follows. Items A1 through E1, resolutions numbers 31113 through 31117 and 31172 through 3177. Any discussion or questions? Very well. All those in favor of the consent adjust, uh, agenda with the mayor's abstention? Grant. Sorry. Yes. Um, was resolution 31178 supposed to be included in that? Great question. Oh, yeah. Motion was moved to do it separately. Did you do it separately? Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Thanks for checking in. What about the other? Okay, so that's just to clarify which one is that then? The last. Very last one. The right before the regular. Okay. Okay, we'll just do that separately then. Okay. Very good. So let's uh We'll uh, move that as a separate item. So let me just clarify, it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with the mayor's abstention. This is items A1 through E1, resolutions 31113 through 31117 and 31172 through 31177. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Will. All those in favor? Uh, to the consent agenda, agenda as stated, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it carries with one abstention. Again, Mayor, Will, thank you. Yep, Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve resolution number 31178, accepting paving associated with Marion Air Com Park First Edition to the City of Marion. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept resolution number 31178, accepting paving associated with Marion Aircom Park, first addition to the city of Marion. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of resolution number 31178 as stated, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries with one abstention. I'm back to the mayor. Your Honor, I move to approve project calendar for the general construction and building concrete trade packages associated with the new public service maintenance facility. Resolutions 31179 through 31181. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve project calendar for the general construction and building concrete trade packages for the new public service maintenance facility. Resolutions 31179 through 31181. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion's approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31182, approving contract and bond with Ralston Construction, Inc. regarding the 2023 storm sewer project in the amount of $128,180.55. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31182, approving the contract and bond with Ralston Construction for the 2023 storm sewer project in the amount of $128,180.55. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve resolution number 31182, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion's approved. Your Honor, I move to approve ordinance number 23-01, amending the chapter 63 of the Code of Ordinances, establishing the speed limit on Fernow Road from Fields Drive to Highway 13 as 35 miles per hour. This is our second consideration. Second. We moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 23-01, amending chapter 63 at the Code of Ordinances establishing the speed limit on Fernow Road from Fields Drive to Highway 13 is 35 miles per hour. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving ordinance number 23-01, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve the project calendar regarding the 2023 Hannah Park Improvement Improvements Project as follows. Resolutions 31183 through 31185. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Brandt, seconded by Councilmember Menser to approve the project calendar for the 2023 Hannah Park Improvements Projects, including resolutions 31183 through 31185. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31186, approving professional services agreement with Kara Briggs Farmer for the Seamar Trail Bridge Light Towers with authorizing and authorizing payment in the amount of $169,750. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31186, approving professional services agreement with Kara Briggs Farmer for the Seamar Trail Bridge Light Towers and authorizing the payment of $169,750. Discussion? Go ahead. Just wanted to let you know I'll be abstaining from this vote. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 31186, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. I abstain. Okay, and we have one abstention. Uh, the motion is approved with one abstention. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 31187, approving public improvement deferrals associated with the Marion South Substation Edition Final Plat for property located north of Highway 100 and west of 44th Street, ITC Midwest LLC. Second. Case okay, removed and seconded to approve resolution number 31187, approving the deferral of public improvements <clears throat> uh, associated with the Marion South Substation Edition final plat for 
the property lo no located north of Highway 100 and west of 44th Street. Discussion? No question. Yes. Uh, do we know the timing of the? Is there any timing set for this project yet? I should probably know that answer, and I do not, but I do think we would like to get started later on this year. Okay. Is that good? Thanks. I just want to say thank you, Cindy, for your comments at the beginning of our session tonight. Um, I had uh, back in one of my prior life forms, I had the experience of uh, helping get the E Avenue substation cited and built, which uh, I would just say was more fun than I could possibly stand at the time. Uh, but um, your your comments um, really resonate for the concern that I, I was expressing. So thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 31187, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion's approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31188, approving an encroachment agreement for a freestanding monument sign into the city owned right of way of 10th Avenue for property located at 999 44th Street. And this is from Platinum Development LLC. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31188, uh, approving the encroachment agreement for a freestanding monument sign in the city right of way of 10th Avenue for the property at 999 44th Street. Discussion? Discussion? Yeah, go ahead. You know, I. I just think we need to continue to work with this property owner. I can see where something is needed there. It's hard as we're going into, this is such an odd, I just feel like it's such an odd lot and unique situation that kind of getting this conversation, I don't know, started with my colleagues here, but I, it's a nice sign. I can see where they need it, but I worry that we're, starting something with encroaching into the city into the right of ways but open to conversation on this well i have a question about the sign itself dave the, like the height of it so if they were to if if we were to deny this and say they were to potentially want to bring it back and put it in a parking spot that's there and we approve that potentially that's is it even tall enough where there'd be cars parked next to it, where you would even be able to see it driving by? Well, let's, say, let's say a big SUV was parked beside it. Um, it's a 12 foot tall total sign. So no. The base looks approximately three feet if I recall. So no, if an SUV is parked in okay. a van. You're Anyone right. else? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So picking up on that theme that, that um, Will just introduced about um, adjacent parking by vehicles, if I understand this right, it is situated essentially immediately north of the parking that is within the public right-of-way. Correct. Um, so I guess I'm, I don't know that I have this concern about a vehicle that's parked obstructing the visual line of sight with a sign. Um, what I have dwelled on over the last uh, couple of days about this is I certainly have a strong appreciation for precedent setting, but that is somewhat counterbalanced by the fact we have public right of way that we have exercised no maintenance on. Um, and I'll just say, while it is public right of way, we've, we've not heretofore exercised the control of that right of way that um, would, is you know, experienced elsewhere. Um, and it is relative I think it is an extremely unique situation. It has no outlet to the east. It has been 
uh, over many, many years been provided in essence to the uh, patrons or the tenants of that, uh, of, of that uh, strip mall. Um, so I, it just has enough unique flavor that I'm having a hard time not approving this for the reasons that I just stated. Um, the sign is not going to create an obstruction to any pedestrian or vehicular traffic uh, that's either on 151 or the side path. Um, it, it merely is going to draw out attention to the businesses that are there. So with, with those some reasons, I'm inclined to vote to approve this with the strong recognition that it is a precedent setting or ought not to be thought of as a precedent setting manner. Steve. Uh, I'll go exactly the opposite of my companion next to me. Uh, I will hang my hat on the precedent situation. Uh, in all of my business career, I know the value of precedent. And once you break precedent, you are opening the door for the entire future. So even though Grant is describing a situation which has some different circumstances maybe than other places, the precedent one is which I will hang my hat on. And I believe the owner of this building uh, can, can think about some other options on how to get done what he needs to get done because the city has already, I think, been very amenable since 1973 in allowing the parking spaces uh, in this area. So to me, the city's already uh, worked with them for, a very, for the last 50 years, but uh, I'll hang my precedent hat on and say no. Anyone else? Okay, it's ready to vote. All those in favor of approving resolution number 31188, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 Okay, we have one aye and the rest are no's. The motion is uh, not approved. This time we have a public forum, which is a time set aside for comments from members of the public. Uh, anyone here to address the council, please come forward, state your name and address. Good evening. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. My name is Anna Clymer. I live at 2475 McGowan Boulevard, Marion, Iowa. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the Marion Alliance for Racial Equity, including members of MAR and our city relations committee who are unable to attend due to the weather. We want to note that we waited patiently for the past year to hear what the city has been doing around diversity, equity, and inclusion. When we asked last year, the city council and city manager suggested that this report, the 2022 equity initiative report, is what the city had to share. As we reviewed the report, we felt was, it was important that we acknowledge that there are several actions listed in the report that are quite fine actions for the city to have taken. However, this report is not inclusive of the recommendations from the Community Equity Task Force, which were accepted by the city council on December 9th, 2021, with a note to direct staff to develop an implementation plan. In accepting those recommendations, the City of Marion's committee committed to policy development, visible data, performance metrics, staffing, impactful employee training, program services evaluation, public awareness, and the community engagement strategies. There are four specific and actionable recommendations that you accepted. First, under city policies and practices, the City of Marion committed to continue support for the implementation of changes to review policies and streamline approaches to hiring and discipline using the equity change framework to approve funding for training of all staff, police officers and board and commission members, and to provide additional funding to support policing data review and reporting. If you are using the equity change framework, it would be good to know how it has been used. We appreciate investments in training, 
The long-term nature of the changes needed mean we must have trainings and job embedded coaching and opportunities to practice different responses. We understand there have been delays in implementing the policing data system, but we cannot wait for the perfect system to take action. It is critical that we continue to have robust and deep conversations about what we as a community want and need from our public safety systems, even when we are perfecting our data system. Second, under equitable policing, the city committed to support implementation of changes to review data and evaluate the efficacy of changes to ask for data on the status of the need for additional mental health staffing at six months and again at 12 months to support funding for additional training for officers on reducing risks of implicit bias, to evaluate progress within the police department and determine the need for added accountability on the necessary data that is available to and to consider the need for a review board at 12 to 18 months or when data became, became available. While the report did indicate that the police officers received four hours of implicit bias training, it was not clear that any of the other items in this, in this report have been implemented. What have we learned about the mental health liaison work? How are we measuring impact? When might we consider increasing the staffing for our mental health supports? When can we expect to reconvene and consider the development of additional structures for support and improvement? Will you be reconvening the Community Equity Task Force to have these deliberations? The heading, the public education on transparency and accountability included continuing education on the rights of citizens and reiterating the duty of the city to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion and hold itself accountable. The city also agreed to consider funding for a dedicated staff member tasked with coordination of diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, as well as fa facilitating the public's role in ensuring accountability and continued progress toward equitable policing. It is critical that we have experts in diversity, equity, and inclusion supporting the city as we work on implementing of systemic improvements. <clears throat> a dedicated staff member that was, has expertise would help to ensure that many questions that the community has about this work was asked and answered. Other than a contact with the attorney in Des Moines, Tom Newkirk, contract with Tom Newkirk, what other efforts have been made to hire dedicated positions or consultants for continuing to support this recommendation? Number four. City leaders finally agreed to deliberate, deliberately adopt, adapt, and integrate the use of an equity change framework into all of its initiatives and operations. What is your timeline for doing this? Again, a dedicated DEI expert could be able to help the city council and the city staff in using the equity change framework. To wrap up, let me be clear that MAR appreciates the city's efforts and we are looking for more coherent, systemic, and sub substantive work over time. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Gretchen Lawyer, and I'm also a member of MAR, and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of our- Say your address, please, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. My address is uh, 5770 First Avenue, Northwest Cedar Rapids, and I'm speaking on behalf of our co-leads tonight, um, of our co-leads, Erica Bernard, of 2690 14th Avenue, who is unable to be here due to our work schedule, and also our co-lead Cersei Stumbo of 339 Pheasant Avenue, who is unable to be here tonight, having lost her father this week. As Anna noted, we've engaged in a careful review of the 2022 City of Marion Equity Report update presented to the City Council on December 20th, 2022. I'd like to share a summarized feedback on the report itself. We have four pages of specific questions and have requested a meeting to have a longer conversation, hopefully soon. In terms of the report, we want to start with appreciation for the actions in the report, such as what is in number 14, community learning opportunity. We appreciate very much the opportunity for the community to take part in that kind of a session. It also appears that several good things are happening in pockets across the city. We want to acknowledge that this work has started. At the same time, we believe it is important to ask questions about the nature and quality of the work reported, as well as the ways that the work will be evaluated. We wonder who is asking deeper questions about the report in order to support careful implementation, evaluation, and adjustments. We noted that as a council, you did not ask many questions in your work session or regular meeting when you received the report in December. We have very long recognized that you are very busy and have much to address, so that in itself is not a concern. However, someone needs to pay very careful attention to the report and to the specific act activities contained within. And that person or group should have a deep understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion in order to ensure the city's actions are research-based, practice-centered, 
and community informed. It is not clear to us who you think that group might be. Perhaps it is implied in number two, the Civil Rights Commission public outreach, that this would be their role. We participated in their meeting last week and certainly are very appreciative of the questions some of the commissioners asked. However, there were very few city staff present at the time, so their opportunity for clarification was limited. More importantly, we believe that the task of reviewing the city's progress on DEI overall is frankly bigger than the Civil Rights Commission. For example, we note that the commission's charter does not include review of the police department. While not all of our concerns at Mars center on policing, the practice and conduct of the police department is the major re reason we were formed. It is unclear to us where questions about the police department's actions that are both included and not included in the equity report are asked. For example, one concern we have is that the complaint process for the police department is unsatisfactory. It centers on individual complaints, not patterns and concerns that are systemic in nature. It is a difficult process to navigate for individuals on multiple levels. From what we can tell, this was not addressed in the equity initiative report. As I noted, we have a series of specific questions about the equity initiative report update. Our key point in my summary tonight is there are many questions that need to be asked of the DEI practices and progress in the city. And we hope that in the absence of an equity task force and an equity director, the questions are being asked and the issues are being addressed. What are the details of the work underway? What theoretical frameworks are used in the ways the work is being carried out? What is the pedagogy or instructional strategies of the various trainings? How is impact measured? What were the topics of the trainings described in the report? What changes resulted after the trainings? What is the implementation plan to extend lessons from the trainings across all city departments? Again, we appreciate the city has taken steps to ensure Marion is a welcoming and inclusive community. We suggest that the deep work of diversity, equity, and inclusion in a place like Marion requires far more attention than any, than any council, board, or commission and could give it in one meeting. We have reached out to the mayor and city managers to find time to talk at that level of specificity and hope to find time soon for those conversations. Thank you. Thank you, Gretchen. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and city council members. I'm Reverend Gary Sneller, 82974 Street Northeast Cedar Rapids. As co-leader, along with Dr. Ray Holman, Jr., pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, uh, as co-leader of Stand in Unity, a faith coalition allied with Marion Alliance for Racial Equity and Cedar Rapids Advocates for Social Justice, we are people of faith who are advocating for racial and social justice in our communities. And I want to thank you, members of the city staff and council, for the uh, racial justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion work that the city of Marion has initiated in 2020 following the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Clear and decisive steps have been taken by this council and the city of Marion to address concerns expressed by members of marginalized people in our community about their experiences living in the city of Marion. The creation of the 2021 Community Equity Task Force was a very positive step in seeking to learn with and from members of the community, especially the minority community, about how the city of Marion could truly embrace and embody its commitment to racial justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. But much work still needs to be done as we strive to implement the four actionable recommendations made by the task force and approved by this council. Other speakers here tonight have reminded us of those four actionable recommendations. My focus is on how Stand in Unity, Marion Alliance for Racial Equity, and other local social justice groups can partner with you in enhancing how the city learns with and from the members of the memor uh, mi minoritized community and from our neighbors in other communities around us like Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, Hiawatha and um, other nearby communities. Because of life experiences that differ from the dominant population, 
Sometimes there are issues of intimidation and fear, even apathy, that mute the voices of people in the minority community. Because of life experiences that differ from the dominant population, their messages may not be always easy to hear. But if we are truly committed to instilling a transformative change toward equity at the individual, institutional, and systemic levels, as the stated purpose of the Community Equity Task Force approved by this council, then we need to find more ways to encourage open and honest communication and conversation with members of the minoritized community. How can that happen? Perhaps a new community equity and inclusion survey, as was done in August and September of 2020, could be approved and initiated by the council as a follow-up to that survey two, three years ago. Consider hiring a community outreach person as a liaison between community members and staff, city staff and police. Remember, many people in the minority communities feel somewhat intimidated coming to city leaders, people in positions of power and authority. A liaison would help to facilitate those communications. Perhaps enhance the role of the Marion Civil Rights Commission in communicating with members of the non-majority community, not just about their rights, but seeking input about their lives here in the community. And finally, engage in ongoing community and city institutional conversations where difficult conversations about race can take place and help to bring about necessary change in our community life. Thank you again for your commitment to racial justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in our community. And there are community members who are eager to work with you, making sure that this important work continues to the betterment of everyone in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor Abisali and, and everyone on the council. My name is Ann Carter, Ann Harris Carter. I live at 3626 Beaver Avenue Southeast in Cedar Rapids. And um, I want to take uh, just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about myself since this is my first time to speak before this board. I'm more accustomed to speaking with the Cedar Rapids City Council, but I'm here uh, standing in solidarity with the Marion um, Alliance for Racial Equity and Standing Unity. So I am a resident of Cedar Rapids, as I said, when I graduated from high school, I left for 30 years for a college and career and then moved back and, um, and I'm still here. Um, I grew up on the Southeast side of town, so I made regular trips uh, out East Post Road. My first piano teacher lived in Marion. Um, our, one of our primary babysitters lived in Marion. Uh, the seamstress who did mending and tailoring services for my mother lived in Marion. And so uh, in recent years, I would have to say, I do admire the economic development that is taking place in this community. Um, and I first and foremost consider myself a Cedar Rapidian, um, but I'm also quick to identify with and patronize uh, the greater, greater metro area, including Marion. I also get to swim in the summertime at Willowwood with my master swimming group, so that's, that's a treat. 100 yard pools are fun. Um, anyway, I am also standing before you as a community volunteer. And I serve on a variety of nonprofit boards. This evening, I have the privilege of representing Advocates for Social Justice, ASJ. We are a 501c3 that, as you may know, was established as a grassroots organization within days after the May 2020 murder of George Floyd, who died as a result of excessive police force. And you may be familiar with ASJ and the seven demands that the Cedar Rapids City Council unanimously approved. Um, I had the specific privilege of um, serving as part of a small team that supported community engagement efforts and negotiated on nearly a weekly basis with the City of Cedar Rapids on the design of what ended up becoming the second CRB or Citizen Review Board in the state of Iowa. And you may know, even with the preliminary injunction last fall that prompted some refinements to the makeup of the uh, CRB selection process, uh, the Cedar Rapids City Council members continue to profess their full support. 
And what I heard from members who serve on the Cedar Rapids Citizen Review Board is that they described they serve because of an overwhelming um, motivation aligned with addressing disparate treatment. And so I understand that establishing a CRB is not at the top of the agenda for Marion. Um, I just want you to know that ASJ does stand in full support of the Marion Alliance for Racial Equity and Stand in Unity and frankly, other social justice groups that are working and for lack of a better word, we'll all refer to as a coalition. Um, others this evening have addressed uh, specific concerns with regard to the City of Marion Equity Initiative 2022 progress report. Um, but I want to reinforce that what happens in Marion does make a difference in the larger community. Um, I've heard uh, calls for the Community Equity Task Force to be reinstated. Um, you know, I think about, again, the economic development here, and it's really empty without social justice because you're not just growing this community for people who live here already. You're seeking to draw people from around Iowa, and I would imagine from what I call the coasts, you know, the, the two rivers. Um, others this evening, um, again, have addressed some specifics. I can tell you, and others will from personal experience, that when tragic stuff happens outside our city borders, it impacts the groundwater here. And I have said many times in my personal life and my professional life that this work requires effort and intentionality. And I just want to ask you, implore you, please do not take that for granted. And thank you for the privilege of speaking with you this evening. Thank you, Ann. Anyone else? Okay, thank you all. Sam will take public uh, council comments. Colette? Don't have any comments this evening. Thank you. you? No, sir. Not tonight. Nothing for me. There? Unless you're going to cover it for Saturday. Go ahead. Chair? All right. Just a reminder Mary and I, Saturday evening, another great free event in our uptown area. And I'm grateful for city and all the partners that are putting that on for our community. I know I've heard from a number of um, folks I've interacted with since that was announced, their excitement for the opportunity for another great event, supporting Mary. And it should be nice weather. Right, I don't know much this snow will be left, but, um, but there, we'll have a great time. So anyway, and council hours on Saturday mornings at the library. Speaking of the library, I'll be there this Saturday. Thank you. All right, we have a closed session. Uh, this evening? We do, Your Honor. I move to adjourn to closed session regarding litigation as permitted under Section 21.51C of the Code of Iowa for two separate items. Second. We moved and seconded to adjourn to closed session regarding litigation as permitted under Section 21.51C of the Code of Iowa. Um, may we have the legal counsel statement, please? Thank you, Your Honor. I have reviewed the proposed subject matter for the closed session and find the same to be appropriate under Iowa Code Section 21.51C. Thank you. Roll call, please. Ms. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Jensen? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mayor Abuasli? Yes. Mr. Brandt? Yes. Ms. Menser? Yes. Okay, thank you for joining us. We're adjourned to closed session. <laughs>